Hello everyone, we're here with Australia's uh, uh, most well-known patriot, uh, Blair Cottrell. Welcome. Thanks, mate. Now, we've uh, written a, a lot about you over the, the past two years, but this is the, the first time that we've actually sat down and have a chat, so uh, it's really good we we're finally able to, to do it. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I'm always willing to have a chat to anyone who wants to have a chat, and currently we're in our, uh, our Melbourne clubhouse, you know, just southeast of Melbourne, it's just a community group that myself and some of my colleagues built together, and uh, so far it's really taken off. Uh, we're here Friday night cooking a barbecue, so apologies for the smoke, but... Uh, Anyone watching this wants to get involved, like just maybe follow a link, or maybe you can put something in the description afterwards, and yeah, they can they can they can contact us. But we're, we're the Lad Society, so yeah. Uh, now, as I said, you're Australia's most well-known um, patriot, nationalist, activist, which uh, obviously has you know put you in the in the firing line of the the media, the activists who've uh, labelled you all sorts of uh, names. How do you take that in on a on a on a personal level? I mean. Um, do you get recognised in public? How do, how do you handle that? Uh, it doesn't seem to have any effect on me personally at all. I'm very indifferent to the, the slanderous attacks against my person for what, it, for what it is that I believe because I'm, I'm sober and focused on my goal and I believe in this country and I believe in what I'm doing. And I, I believe the minute I pay any uh, actual attention or take, any, take offence to anything anyone has said, it distracts me from my goal, and so I, I try not to um, be distracted. Do I get recognised in public? Yes, quite often. Uh, it's overwhelmingly positive, actually. Most people thank me and shake my hand, and some people even ask me for photographs. But uh, only twice in the past three years have I been approached by, by people who didn't like me. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't overly uh, aggressive, because I don't think people feel comfortable to confront me openly. However, uh, it, it, was, it was particularly nasty, that, but it certainly doesn't deter me uh, from, from what I do and what I believe because the people who criticise me in my experience, from what I've seen, uh, seem to be the people who are so uh, emotionally invested in the present day system that uh, after having listened to me or heard me criticise that system, they feel obligated to defend it. And uh, that, that seems to be commonplace throughout all of the people who don't don't like me. Now you founded the, the United Patriots uh, Front which uh, was uh, most prominent uh, with opposition to the, the Bendigo Mosque. Now how did you manage to, to grow the, the UPF as, as it was known? How did you able to get the, the word out? And at one stage your Facebook page was at uh, 120,000 likes and you had uh, state pages as well and it, it was, there was a lot of community support for it. Yes, well, um, it, it was quite simple, actually. Uh, we, we developed a program uh, whereby we would maintain a message of, uh, of opposition to Islam and to the left-wing corruption of the institutions. Uh, anything that distracted us from that, that goal, our opposition to these things and this enemy, uh, we steered away from it. We didn't let ourselves be distracted from, from focusing on our goal. Uh, the UPF or United Patriots Front was uh, took after my personality, I believe, in that it was explosive uh, and, and almost impulsive. And uh, there was not necessarily any long-term goal in view, but it was very effective because uh, my understanding of the way people think and what they're receptive to, I believe, is sound, judging on the results that we had with the UPF and the promotion of our rallies. Uh, what stopped us is not the left, as they would probably claim, but the state government. Uh, the government stepped in to charge me and two of my colleagues with intending to incite ridicule on, uh, on Facebook of Muslims, uh, for which we were convicted last year. And at the same time, our Facebook page was mysteriously and abruptly deleted without any explanation. Uh, according to my information, uh, members of uh, ASIO, Australian Security Intelligence Organisation, and the Australian Federal Police made a combined effort to contact Facebook and demand that our uh, Facebook page be shut down for, for reasons of national security. I heard this from a good source within the Victoria Police itself. And uh, that, I believe, uh, combined with the legal charges against us, uh, forced us to stagnate and our attention was, was forcefully pulled away from our goal of uh, saving this country from what is destroying it, which is a, 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 a sort of relentless immigration campaign 
uh, together with uh, basic moral corruption at an institutional level. But uh, uh, the appeal for my conviction is well underway. And I am back on Facebook now, it seems, as an individual rather than a uh, representative of an organisation. And uh, I am just as focused and just as determined to serve my country and to, uh, to alert and enlighten the Australian people uh, every day. And so uh, I'm prepared to continue my, my, my quest. And that would have been a big setback for you to lose your entire network. Well, what is the future of the United's uh, Patriot Front? Obviously, the, the True Blue crew has uh, become quite prominent here in the, the, the Melbourne area, and you are uh, featured in, in one of their, their videos. Will UPF make a comeback? Or uh, As I said, the UPF was very much characteristic of my personality. Uh, every decision that was made uh, went through me, and I made the final... Uh, the final decision on everything that we did. Uh, it was very, um, it was a very explosive and aggressive political uh, uh, political activity, series of political activities. Uh, now, the same people who are responsible for or were indispensable to to the development of our organisation in the UPF are still with me, uh, most of them. And uh, now I've been convinced uh, that we need to uh, we need to be in this for the long run, and we need to think ahead and actually make a plan a start to finish plan about how we are going to uh, reclaim our country in the truest sense of the phrase. And uh, so now, uh, part, part of what we are doing here is, is for that reason, to create a community organisation. Uh, rather than... Sorry, we're, we're quite loud here. Yeah. So uh, to create a community organisation, as I said, uh, partly because uh, we need to play the game. Uh, we were obviously a significant threat to the establishment in, in our original form as the UBF because we were so aggressive and persistent. And basically I'm, I'm seeing the action taken against me by the establishment as a, as a sign that, uh, that we, we probably cannot win that way and, unless, we, uh, and, unless we generated a significant amount of uh, popularity, more popularity than we had back then faster. So uh, we took the system by surprise with our political activity, but uh, now we've been set back by the legal attacks and by the shutdown of our primary platform through which we communicated with our support base. So now it's about taking a step backwards for us and uh, creating a physical network of people. This is not this is actually my clubhouse. Uh, one of my colleagues conceived of this and I lent my labour to it. And uh, this, I'm not the president of this project. My colleague Tom Sewell is the president. And uh, I'm happy to, to follow where I need to follow and to lead where I need to lead. And so now we're in it for the long run and we're building a network and an organisation that's going to be more sophisticated and, uh, and, and more organised than it ever was before. Yes, uh, and as the, judging by the noise, uh, we, we are at uh, what's uh, just been uh, launched there, the, the Lad Society. So you've, you've gone public now. What is the, it's the, the promotional video talks about it's uh, uh, a brotherhood. Obviously, it's, it's a focus on the, the welfare of uh, men. Um, what is the, the network that you're you're trying to create with this and uh, what would you say are the the goals of like the welfare of the membership uh, we want to grow and expand throughout the entire country not just the state of victoria as we already are we've also set up a community-based organization in uh, new south wales and uh, almost another one in queensland too is coming up uh, we want to attract the uh the the disillusioned and and patriotic peoples of this country who are young, strong, or at least seeking to improve themselves and be part of something once more. In this country, we have various representatives of various different communities, whether it's the Sudanese community or the Chinese community, but nobody seems to be uh, eager to represent the Anglo or European Australian community. And I ask, why not? Why can't the uh, European Australian community have representatives in a community-based organisation? It doesn't make any sense why we can't. Uh, and it seems like we are being pushed into a corner and, uh, and led into a position uh, where we will find ourselves soon to be a minority in our own country. And so I think it's important to... Uh, to try to foresee what's going to happen uh, socially and economically in this country, uh, to try to uh, do everything we can to avert the crisis our people face. And the first stage in doing that is to, is to create not necessarily a counterculture, but a community group uh, that's going to draw in our people. And uh, we're going to train together, we're going to learn together, and we're going to be together here. Uh, we're gonna, we want to become uh, almost a fresh nation within a nation. 
in, in a nation which is unfortunately uh, uh, suffering uh, a cancer almost and, and, and is close to its, to its death, in, a, in, a, in, the, in the opinion of a lot of our members, close to its death. I am more uh, optimistic, but uh, this, I believe, is the way forward for us. We do have freedom of assembly in this country. Uh, so nothing we do here is illegal, and there is nothing illegal whatsoever going on in these in these complexes. We're a registered business and all above board. We already have been vandalised once by uh, by two personalities who didn't seem to know they were on camera. Uh, one uh, heavy set male and one woman. They they had their face masked, faces masked, and they threw a brick at our window and, and graffitied our, our our other windows. Uh, our members put in to to fix that that damage in in within a couple of days. It was no problem, but. Uh, uh, it's amusing to think that there are people in society who regard us as a dangerous aggressor when all we try to do is gather and, and voice our opinions and share opinions and we are viciously uh, attacked. Uh, people attempt to terrorise us for just, just for coming together. Uh, but this won't deter us. Actually, I think one of the reasons people say that I'm the Australian version of Tommy Robinson is not because my ideology or view, view of the world is in, totally in line with Tommy Robinson's, but because criticism uh, and, and vicious attacks against my person only further embolden me and, and make me more convinced that what I believe is the truth and what I'm doing is the right thing. Uh, so, yeah, that's, this is what, that's what we are here and that's what we hope to achieve, is to build uh, a community, a network of like-minded people, our own countrymen, to, to re-establish or, or reclaim a future for ourselves. Yeah, I'm amazed at these uh, left progressive social justice warriors who just constantly freak out about you and uh, other uh, patriot activists. I mean, yeah, I've I've been here for an hour, hour or so tonight, and I I feel perfectly fine. It's it's fine. Well, yes, obviously these people, these leftists, as we understand them, they've been conditioned or even pre-programmed to, uh, to react to us and what we say uh, in, a, in a certain pattern. And uh, they've been led to believe that we are this evil boogeyman and that even though we are working class and, and sometimes even unable to scrap together the funds to host our own rally, uh, we're, we're viewed as a, f a fascist state boogeyman or something like that, uh, something that is... That is not just undesirable, but conspiratorial and problematic and dangerous, when all we are is members of our country who want to ensure that our people and our culture uh, secures a future for itself. And I don't see why that is viewed as so horrible. Uh, of course, there's all of these claims that uh, the, the white people of the world are responsible for all of these horrible barbaric acts and genocides and, and everything bad that's ever happened in human history is somehow the fault of white people. You can believe that if you want, if you, if you, want, to, if you want to subscribe to that simplistic propagandist view of history. But, uh, but, that, but none of us here in this generation now have killed anybody or, or committed any genocides and all we want is the best for our own people. If I were a member of any other race in this world, that would be something which would be commendable, even funded by the government. But because I'm white, it's, it's evil and it's, it's, it's set up, it's, it's even considered illegal in some circumstances. And I think in the future it's going to be interesting to see if the freedom of assembly laws in Victoria suffer as a result of us building these clubhouses. And I think there's every chance that could happen. Now, uh, as you mentioned, you're back on Facebook and you're also active on, on Twitter as well. I want to ask you why, and you've already spoken about it, why is it so important for you to focus on the, the welfare uh, of white people? You've, you've talked about uh, why can't you know, white people have their own homeland and you've also uh, sp spoken about the... Oh, I think everyone's concerned about what's happening in uh, South Africa. So can you just elaborate on that a bit more? Well... I suppose, first of all, I, I'm something of an amateur propagandist myself. And so I recognise propaganda when I see it. And I realise that there is a propaganda, a propaganda campaign all throughout the West, which primarily affects white people themselves, which leads white people to believe that they are, they are horrible, evil, shameful people, and that they don't deserve a future, and that they've committed all these horrible, barbaric acts, and that the, the, the disappearance, their own racial disappearance from the earth is the answer to world peace. And uh, this is all subjective political propaganda and it's evil in its nature. Uh, I believe my people deserve a right to exist as we are. Uh, I, I don't subscribe to a globalist uh, cult think. And I, uh, I believe that 
I come from a creative people, a people responsible for a great deal of, uh, of exploration and achievement in history. And I choose to focus on the positive things that my people have accomplished and the positive aspects of the culture and the, and the, the nature of my people, rather than doing as the system expects me to do and to focus only on the negative and to basically subscribe to a non-violent genocide of my own race. I, I will not do that. And I believe everybody in this club is behind me when I say that uh, we will persistently fight against that system that advocates for our, our basically our extinction or replacement. And uh, we won't give up and, and we, will, we will do everything in our power to, uh, to uh, legally uh, re-establish ourselves as a community. Now, obviously, when you started the United Patriots Front, it was about uh, uh, Islam stopping the um, Islamization of Australia. But obviously, in Melbourne, we've seen the the African uh, crime crisis, and so that is. Do you believe that's probably the the biggest local issue we're facing? Probably the biggest issue we're facing is is more psychological than physical. What I mean is, people don't re uh, don't seem to understand. Many people do, but. But a lot of people don't. They don't understand that uh, every race in, on this earth, uh, no matter how offensive you believe this is, has an ethnic personality, uh, which is which is inborn in my in my view. And if you bring Africans from Africa, they're going to behave like Africans. You can't bring a people from a foreign land and expect them to behave like like members of your own country. Even after several generations of of living in this country. You will find that uh, they, they may have integrated to a certain degree, but they will still be a, a strange people. They will still be foreign in essence, because nationality is not where you are, but who you are. It is not lo your location, but your, but your uh, biological lineage. I don't believe all people of the world are born as a blank slate or a blank sheet of paper. I believe we have an ethnic inborn personality or history, uh, which is imprinted in our DNA. And I believe the effort to uh, try to to try to mix the peoples together, either by coercion or force, is an effort to, which ultimately serves a globalist system. Uh, because only a people which uh, has no history and has no nation, uh, are people who, who are mongrelized, uh, and, and in the truest sense of the word, uh, who, who don't know who they are and where they come from, only such people can, can serve a, an international rootless money power uh, with, without eventually forming some sort of resistance against it. And already you can see the soullessness with which people serve the dollar in this country, people who aren't proud of themselves and who have no knowledge of their history and their own nation. Uh, all they think about is themselves and they're aggressive and stressed and slaves to debt and the dollar. Uh, this, I believe, is a prostitution of the human soul. And that's the greatest problem we face. It's not necessarily any specific race or type of people. It's our inability to understand that we are a people which is exclusive. Uh, who are exclusive? We have our own personality, and unless we can protect our identity as a people, we're going to lose who we are. Okay, and whether it's by, from, from Sudanese immigration, Muslim immigration, or Chinese immigration, doesn't really matter. It's not about hating anyone. You don't have to. You don't have to hate the Chinaman or the Muslim or the or the, or the Sri Lankan or somebody else. You just have to understand that you come from a great history and this country is great. Western countries, first world countries, are first world countries, not because they've exploited and crushed other, other, other peoples of the world, but because they are, by nature, biologically, a, a, a creative, idealistic, selfless people. And I would like to ensure that that does not disappear from the earth. Well, your insights have been interesting tonight, Blair, and I've appreciated you uh, chatting uh, with me tonight. And uh, I'll let you get uh, back downstairs for the uh, the food that's been uh, being cooked. But yeah, uh, hopefully we'll we'll keep in contact. Thank you very much. Thank you. This has been an unshackled fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.